Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Hello dear people of the land, I uh, hope you are fine, I hope you are doing okay and I hope you are in high spirits as we end the week. Just a recap, I'm not going to be long. Uh, now we are So we are all getting ready to wind down and prepare for uh, a weekend, a wonderful weekend and a safe one, hopefully. Keep it safe, keep it safe and be safe on the roads. Uh, just a recap of the week. There are too many things that have taken place uh, this week, as is the case in most weeks on the political front. Uh, just going to mention about four things. Um, uh, number one, Wakatorika, I think, realized that they made a serious public relations mistake when they tried to inject themselves in this divisive tribal politics. And uh, there was pushback from the public and uh, social media influencers or some social media influencers, including myself. We said, look, this is not the church, the business of the church to be injecting themselves in uh, partisan, divisive tribal politics, as is the case in Zambia. Churches should be bodies that seek healing and reconciliation. On the pulpit, they should preach redemption, they should preach salvation, they should preach healing. In terms of works, they should go out there in the hospitals and help Zambians who need help, who are sick. They should go in the prisons and uh, reach out to Zambians who are in jail, locked up and uh, traumatized. They should go to the streets where there are a lot of street children and orphans and uh, junkies and addicts and prostitutes. Those are the type of activities that the church should be involved in. The church uh, is operating at a supernatural level and they should not inject themselves in divisive tribal politics. And we know why they're doing that. It's a symptom of a vast problem across Zambia that has been brewing over the decades, over the years, over the decades. Uh, it's all about greed. It's all about chronism, it's all about tribalism, it's all about power, it's all about lust, it's all about gluttony. It's symptomatic of a serious, widespread, deep rooted uh, problem that has pervaded our nation. And we need to find a way of dealing with this in the years ahead because right now they have pulled back, they realize they were wrong, but still underneath the surface there is a serious problem with the church body in Zambia and we can't function as a nation like this. Some serious soul searching is needed within the church itself but within the citizenry. So we expect to see them kind of pull back and be silent. It's a shame that the opposition uh, still wants to drag this into the politics, into the political field, into the political dirt, uh, because they see this as a way of uh, uh, getting sympathy from the Catholic Church and uh, them distancing away from the ruling party. It's not helpful, you know, let the church be non-partisan, let the church be bipartisan, let the church work with everybody, uh, ruling, opposition, civil society, everybody, towards the redemption, salvation and healing of the Zambian people and of the Zambian nation. Don't get into politics because of your greed, because of your chronism, because of your tribalism, that is wrong. That is not what the church was meant to do. That is not what the church is meant to do. That's number one. Number two, I would like to talk about the next five to ten years, the next two to ten years being the perfect window for uh, tribal and regional reconciliation in Zambia. Uh, it is up to leaders in the political front and in civil society, social media influencers and public personalities, all influential personalities, bodies, institutions, organizations and businesses to work towards tribal and regional harmony. The country remains seriously divided uh, between two regions and I think that is unhealthy. 
tribalism remains a very uh, serious problem underneath the surface. Um, it's a tribal nation. It's, it's a tribal nation. Uh, we are very good at covering it up, uh, but there are instances when it rears its ugly head. And um, this is not uh, a situation or a mentality or orientation uh, that we must ignore. It is one that we must continually confront, address, find solutions how we can uh, resolve these problems. Um, the country is heavily divided. Um, you, you know, <laughs> What can I say about that? Social media is great and it has done a lot of great things exposing people to a lot of information and knowledge. So I love social media. It has done a lot of good. But one of the negative effects of social media is that sometimes people can dig in through social media in terms of uh, tribal sentiments. People follow what they want to follow, insult who they want to insult, and everybody is brave behind social media and they pass all sorts of comments and statements. Those of you who have known me for a long time and have followed me for a long time know that I've always uh, pointed out that I am in the middle. I am objective, or I try to be objective, uh, non-partisan, uh, not interested in tribe. I have absolutely no interest in who's, what tribe someone is. Uh, and so being in the middle has created a very good, uh, unique opportunity for me to give proper assessments. They are not perfect, and sometimes I do make mistakes, but as much as I possibly can, I try to get it right. And I have tried as much as possible to give praise where praise is due and give criticism where criticism is due and I've tried as much as possible to call a spade a spade but I from the time this page started in 2016 have tried to be neutral and I was neutral now here's what happened going into the elections of 2021 there was increased incidences of cadarism brutality police brutality cadres cadres attacking uh, opposition uh, there was this issue of pangas there was this issue of uh, tribal statements there was this issue of blocking uh, an opposition leader from campaigning in certain provinces uh, we saw images of people being injured with pangas and you had the state prosecutor who had been uh, killed by uh, accidentally killed uh, by a stray bullet and another party cadre killed by a stray bullet there were all these things going on and when officials visited the usa i was able to see how much money was being not i was able to see the I had a glimpse of how money was being wasted. Zambian taxpayers' money was being wasted when officials travel abroad. And all this was happening at a time when the debt was uh, going up. And the atmosphere made me drift away from being in the middle and decisively telling Zambians that we need to change. We need a change of government. And when we defaulted on our loan, that was the last straw. I said, I can't continue being in the middle. So I sided, I sided with UPND. But I mentioned beforehand that when UPND, if UPND gets into power, I will return to the middle where I belong. So I campaigned heavily for UPND along with thousands of other Zambians. I did it on social media. There were many other Zambians who did it on social media and on the ground. And UPND won the election. And after they won the election, I returned to the middle, giving praise where praise is due and giving criticism where criticism is due. When I went back to the middle, I was shocked at the insults that attracted from UPND cadres and praise singers. As far as they were concerned, I am a UPND as in their mind. You know, they were fixated on that. They said, you campaigned for UPND, so you're yeah, UPND. There's no way you can be in the middle. When I insisted that I am in the middle and I will offer checks and balances and give praise where praise is due and criticism where criticism is due, the insults that came my way from UPND supporters was just unbelievable. The stories that made up, the fake news that they brought up, the things that they tried to do to destroy my reputation were just unbelievable. And I was shocked. But I'm not the only one. They did that to so many others. And now what I'm saying is that that type of behavior does not promote tribal unity. It does not promote regional unity. It opens a lot of wounds. Now, 
someone like me who doesn't care, I've got my own ideology, my own agenda of uniting Zambia, it's fine. But the problem is when you do it to many others, uh, there are people out there who don't forget. And so it opens more wounds and then it escalates and then it perpetuates by, pe by perpetuate. I mean, it goes on and on and the toxic atmosphere stays. And with that type of environment, with that type of atmosphere, Zambia cannot develop. In order for Zambia to develop, we have to beat tribalism, we have to beat regionalism. And now I'm back in the middle. I have criticized the president very badly or not badly, no, let me not say badly, but harshly uh, at times when I felt he was doing the wrong thing and I have praised him abundantly when I felt he was doing right. When I praise him, UPND say, yeah. When I criticize him, PF say, yeah. That is a reflection of how divisive this country is. There is no objectivity, there is biasness, and we need to get past that. I think we need to learn how to promote English as the official language. We need to move around Zambia more. We need to marry each other more. Anything that helps diminish, undermine, contain tribalism will be a welcome move for the nation of Zambia. So that is something we must continually promote within the next two to five years this will be an ongoing uh, thing that will we'll have to continue working at for many years and many generations but i see the next two to ten years as the perfect window for us to uh, create more tribal and regional harmony in zambia and eliminate this tribal thing as much as we possibly can and rally behind uh, issues that add meaning to our lives uh, and rally behind our war on poverty Yes, okay, so let's use the next two to ten years to promote regional unity. The third thing that I'd like to talk about is uh, there was a screaming headline. By a screaming headline, it's a headline that is out there. It's in large letters that you cannot ignore. And it's something like UPND will rule for the next 23 years. Made by apparently a UPND senior official. Let's avoid making those type of comments. They are not helpful. They just create more resentment and division. Uh, they, we don't know what the power shifts are every five to ten years but power does shift that's a fact and so with a shift in power you never know who ends up in power in the next five years in the next 10 years 15 20 and so on and so forth when you pass comments like that it is careless and it is irresponsible and it's putting a lot of people in a very difficult situation in the sense that if power shifts in favor of the opposite side a lot of people will be subjected to a lot of harassment intimidation and even a physical injury so we must avoid those type of comments that can incite or create even more division and misunderstanding we must discourage that as much as we possibly can don't say you're going to rule Zambia for the next 23 years say with the people's blessings or with the people's goodwill you intend to lead Zambia for the next 10 20 30 years it can even be 40 100 years say we intend to lead with the humble uh, goodwill or uh, uh, faith of the Zambian people as long as they continue blessing us as long as they continue having confidence in us we intend to lead put it that way don't say you are going to rule you, you are even saying it in a commanding uh, term or a commanding uh, 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 attitude that you're going to rule the, don't, don't say that say you're going to lead we're going to do a good job so that Zambians can continue blessing us for the next 20 years talk like that talk with humility uh, be intelligent in how you pass these comments don't say you're going to rule over people don't say that you are making my work of uh, whatever little role I can play in promoting tribal and regional unity me and many others who are trying to do that you are making our work difficult don't say things that will incite or deepen the wounds there are already enough wounds to go by on both sides. We must support the fight against corruption. And corrupt, that fight in itself opens up wounds, but it's a legitimate fight. It's a just fight that must be fought. All corrupt elements must be brought to book. But aside from that, there are certain statements that just should not be made uh, anyhow. Let's focus on corruption. Yes, it will create division, but it's the right fight. But don't just go on the media and say we're going to rule Zambia for 23 years. Uh, people don't like that type of arrogance. You know, uh, let's continue to promote tribal and regional unity by partisanship. It is extremely important that we do that because if you look at Europe, they don't have tribes there. America, they don't have tribes. They eliminated those type of mentalities a long time ago and they were able to move ahead economically. Africa is still stranded and stuck 
attack in tribal mentalities and that is reflected in our politics in order to develop we have to get past that and the sooner we do that the better off we will be so we have to watch what we say and even when it comes to fighting corruption and uh, money laundering and all sorts of criminal activities by past elements uh, it is also important how it's done uh, don't ambush uh, people give them call outs don't ambush whether it's a lawmaker or a former minister or even an individual citizen if they are not a flight risk just issue call outs don't ambush don't ambush it's it creates a bitter toxic environment a bitter test and you don't want a situation where if power shifts in future it will be time for revenge let's continue promoting institutions let's be objective let's equip our institutions to be fair and just and let them continue to fight corruption and we'll continue to support that the final thing that i would like to talk about is that we have to promote that this is the fourth and final thing we have to promote local talent i've posted very much about that today you know in the world of sports music acting fashion design uh, poetry uh, modeling uh, uh, comedians uh, you know we have to spend money and attend their shows and demand uh, for good performances from them uh, you know if we promote the entertainment industry in zambia and i say this because i say this deliberately because that tends to be overlooked and they are always the ones who suffer the first budget cuts promoting the entertainment industry is part of zambia's game plan for overall economic development in marketing zambia both locally regionally and abroad so i'll be talking about this more in the months uh, 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 months ahead and I'm in touch with a lot of youngsters who have some talent and I'm constantly trying to find ways in which I can help them but there's a limit to what I can do as an individual we need all citizens being involved in promoting local talent and that means identifying it as early as possible nurturing it promoting it let it letting it grow and subjecting Zambians to all sorts of wonderful talent every week shows events that they can go to and enjoy you take your husband wife children boyfriend girlfriend go watch the show whether it's comedy fashion music acting we need to see all that in Zambia it will be very good for Zambians if we subject ourselves to wonderful entertainment that even crosses the borders crosses the ocean and is out there in the open so anyway these are some of the things that we need to look at i haven't posted a lot of videos this week i've been quite busy but i will post some more videos on these issues that i've touched on next week in the meantime you have a wonderful week enjoy your weekend stay safe and you know uh, let's just continue being good and kind to each other okay thank you very much have a good night All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.